You, you, the world, you're full of surprises, aren't you? I remember a few years back watching some of those Resident Evil movies with Mila Jovovich and thinking, they can't get any worse than this. Yeah, it feels like a simpler time. But with 2021's final gasping breath, it came out with Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City, AKA, welcome to hell. I knew you were trouble when you walked in, Claire Redfield, and shame on me for thinking that this could possibly be anything other than dog crap. If you're a fan of the video game franchise that's been going since the PlayStation 1, that name Claire Redfield might have jumped out at you. That's right, that, that's one of the characters from the video game. Her brother's in this too, Chris, the, the beefed up, steroid-induced, brotastic, awesome lead. He's played by Hollywood vag throb Robbie Amell. I had no idea who this guy was, but my wife did. She pointed him out instantly. What is she doing on her phone? Probably the same thing I'm doing. Looking up actors in films! All the video game fan favorites are here, played by actors who look nothing like them. Jill Valentine, Albert Wesker, Ada Wong. And fans of Resident Evil 4 will be very unhappy that Leon is also in this. Played like a complete idiot. He's a joke to the force. They, they think he sucks. And you know what? He kind of does in that. He does have the hair though. He has that beautiful flowing hair that he gets to kind of flick back. Gorgeous man. Gorgeous actor. P piss poor character. But saying he's a character is already kind of unfair because no one in this movie is really anything. The, the script is such bullshit. I can't even describe it. I'll try. I'll try. We follow the Redfields, mostly Claire, as she heads back to Raccoon City after being gone for quite a long time. You see, her and her brother were raised in an orphanage as little ones, and she befriended, kind of, a creepy girl creature that lives underground. At least that's what the creature says. She's, she says, I live below. What's down below, though? Can't wait to find out later in the film. We don't. We, we don't know what's down there. We really don't know what the hell's going on in this movie. Although in the last 20 or so minutes, they try to explain some of it. There's a conveniently placed uh, clip show already set up. You just have to turn on the projector. And it shows a bunch of old footage, old timey footage from like the 80s. I guess, I guess in the 80s, we were using projectors. Um, it's even more funny because the projector footage was clearly shot on 4K high def cameras and they put the laziest amount of film grain you could think of over the top. I mean, the, the picture is incredibly clear with just some grain and shit. Remarkable. Remarkable what the technology was in the 80s or 70s, whatever. It should have been a VHS tape that they could have put in a VCR, but I understand. We're trying to make nods to the video game. I was expecting at some point the character to go to a typewriter and hit save, uh, and we could continue the movie at a later point. Or better yet, never continue it. Listen, I've played a lot of the Resident Evil video games. I was never in it for the story. Usually after about a half hour in, it all peters out, goes completely bonkers, fucking Mickey Mouse. So. The fact that the script was trying to be true, I guess, to the game was not a good idea. Not a good look. I'd say there's spoilers, but I don't think anybody's going to this movie, and there's really nothing to spoil. It's just thrown on the pile, once again, of bad video game movie adaptations. Shoestring budget, C-list actors, I'm being generous. Really nothing exciting at all. The, the scares aren't there. There's like one or two jump scares in the whole thing. A weird fetishization of objects that the camera slowly moves towards that don't elicit a single response. It's like, look at atmosphere. There's a chair, not even moving. There's a doll, not that creepy. This is all they have to offer. It is rated R. If there was a lot of swearing, I missed it. I, I, was, I, I watched this very late. I, I, at one point I accidentally hit the PlayStation controller, which is what I was watching it on, and it fast forwarded about 20 minutes, I think. So I tried to rewind back to where I was and then realized they didn't care at all. Um, so maybe I missed some swearing. I certainly didn't miss any violence or excessive gore. There's a couple scenes where zombies eat on people, they feast, it's not good, it doesn't look cool. No, nothing about this is good. And somehow this movie, which clocks in at just over an hour and a half, manages to somehow be both really fast moving and a goddamn chore to sit through. It's it's quick and slow in tandem. The cinematography, if you want to call it that, ranges from passable to downright awful. There's a sequence where our two leads go into an elevator shaft for a little bit. I thought I was watching something off Pornhub. A lot of sexual talk in this review. Let's keep going. 
This is a rant, so I apologize for not keeping focus. I realized I was trying to tell you the plot, but then got sidetracked by all the nonsense. Really, I kind of talked about the entire thing, though. Uh, Chris and his sister are raised in an orphanage. She kind of goes off and does her own thing, learns to be cool, and then she goes back to Raccoon City to get her brother out of there because some crazy whack job on YouTube um, um, said that there's doom and gloom in the town. They're doing experiments, something with the water, poisoning the well, and uh, at 6 p.m. the whole thing is going up in flames. And she just has a bad feeling, so she goes there to see her estranged brother. It's been five years. He's not that thrilled with even having her here. And this whole town is abandoned. Really the only people left are the, the seven or eight cops and a person that works at a diner. That, that's it, that's the majority. Oh, and there's a semi-truck driver who's just everywhere all the time. That's the majority of the, the population. Why not just let the place burn to the ground? I mean, that's what ends up happening anyways. The, the main issue of all the issues, there's so many, is there's just no plot. Like, there's no story. She goes to get her brother out. Somehow that leads to them investigating all these places from the first Resident Evil game. They go, you know, you're at the police station. Then you go to the mansion. Then you're at an orphanage. I don't even know if the orphanage is in the first Resident Evil or if that's a callback to one of the later ones. It's been a long time. It's been a long time. Anyway, I, I, they're, they're doing nothing. They're just surviving these situations and uncovering little clues that end up leading nowhere. It's useless. And then with just over 20 minutes left of the film, I shit you not, they think now is the best time to introduce Nemesis. We're throwing him into the film. I thought for sure they were gonna end on a terrible tease for the sequel because the guy injected himself with that serum and they were gonna just do like a slow zoom in of him start to transform into Nemesis or say like, I'm your real Nemesis. You know, like the Venom 1 ending where he's like, it's time for carnage. Yeah, no, they actually went all in on Nemesis. Pathetic. Really, really bad. They took him out pretty easily. Th this, this thing is so awful. And then it just ends. It just straight ends. The, the, the town gets destroyed. Spoiler. There's a countdown at 6 a.m. The whole thing's going to go up in flames. Which was another bizarre side plot that went nowhere. Where a guy has a like a blueberry or a blackberry or whatever those things were called in his locker. And it says, the whole thing's going to be destroyed at six. He's like, oh God, okay. And then that's it. That, that's all we know about that. He just was working with some of the umbrella people for, for reasons. And uh, yeah, it, it blows up. And then our leads, the five or six of them walk towards the camera. We get some awful green font with some text on there because that's also a callback to the game. And then it ends, Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City, which is funny because when the movie starts, it's just called Resident Evil. They didn't bother to put the like the subtitle on there. They, they, they put that H2 at the end of the film, that, that second heading. Good stuff. Just good stuff all around. Horrible CG effects, terrible action, bad gore. There's, there's nothing to praise here. Really, really bad. Unless you're just so hard up for yet another bad Resident Evil movie chock full of terrible references. Then I guess, bon appetit! Well, those are my thoughts on Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. Really bummed out I missed out on this last year. And that reminds me, something I try to bring up from time to time when I do like a top 10 list or a best and worst list. You gotta take them with a grain of salt. Uh, I just put out a worst of 2021 movie list. This wasn't on there because I hadn't yet seen it. Uh, obviously, I'd go back and retroactively put this on that list. Very high up by the way. Really one of the worst movies 2021 had to offer that I saw. Let me know if you saw this film in the comments below. If you avoided it, good for you. Don't, don't watch. It's, it's really terrible. Like the video if you had a good time. Subscribe if you haven't. Hopefully I'll see you soon. Take me down to the raccoon city where the script is bad and the acting is shitty. Hey, 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 hey. That was my Guns N' Roses. Follow me on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. Clearly I need the money. Clearly I need the help. Or you can become a member right here on YouTube via the join button. Die. I mean bye. <laughs> Resident Evil.